नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते एवरीवन तो भैया वी कैन पुट अप द असाइनमेंट हियर सो दिस इज द असाइनमेंट दैट वी टुक यस्टरडे at any time that is convenient for you a time when you are likely to be undisturbed and when you don't have to be urgently involved in any activity outside sit down in a quiet place by yourself for 20 to 30 minutes and try to observe your imagination whatever is going on within you and then note down your observations we'll discuss them so we have started discussing exercise 1 now so we took an introduction to the whole exercise that we are doing in the morning for the first three weeks and then we have started discussing exercise 1 and 2 so in exercise 1 basically we are observing the self by the self so we can see clearly that it is ultimately the awakening of the self to the activity of contemplation understanding and realization that is my need that ensures happiness innately within me so that i do not have to fetch happiness from outside i am happy by myself and my conduct is definite my conduct is fulfilling with one and all so with that now we could see that there are three things to observe in the existence the consciousness the material and the submergence that is coexistence so exercise one is basically observing the consciousness by the consciousness that is self by the self exercise 2 is observing the material by the consciousness and one example of material is the body so observing the body by the self and exercise 3 is observing the coexistence the submergence of nature in space we will not be doing exercise 3 here because it needs lot more preparation so we are going to do exercise 1 and 2 and you can see that in exercise 1 and 2 also a lot of preparation is required even at every step you may see that there is a lot of scope for improvement in each one of us so we have started doing exercise 1 and with that only we took that assignment yesterday namaste uh, bhaiya i have got uh, two queries the first one bhaiya regarding the purification of sanskar nowadays i could observe that i am having a predominant sanskar of ego and i could see that my ego is reflecting in many of my actions the question is bhaiya whenever we say purification is it that i have to struggle or suffer through the process or can it naturally can it happen naturally without uh, struggling or suffering can i overcome my ego when we mean purification of sanskar and regarding the second question by you i just want to know what we are supposed to look at the relationship between self and body what actually we are supposed to look at the relationship between self and body these are my two questions by you nice didi so regarding the first question i will say that it is up to you so whenever we have some lack of competence there is one option that we can struggle with it Mm-hmm. then it becomes painful so ego could be one mm-hmm. lack of mm-hmm. with several other so the other mm-hmm. is i can see the naturally acceptable feeling in me and i can contemplate on it the more i am able to contemplate on it the lack of competence gets done away with and i become competent it means that i get awakened mm-hmm. so if i try to evaluate myself rightly then over under otherwise evaluation naturally right uh, get set right mm-hmm. so i don't have to struggle with that i can just see that okay this is not what is acceptable to me naturally and i can look mm-hmm. within what is acceptable to me naturally mm-hmm. isn't it so whenever we see some problem inside there could be multiple approaches that one can take one can try to ignore and you see that uh we keep on doing all these from time to time so one can simply ignore mm. but okay let it be you know doesn't matter the second approach could be we try to justify it 
yes i have i am having ego but that is required in this world this materialistic mm. world mm -hmm. people will not let me survive if i do not have ego and things like that mm -hmm. ego is enough to survive in the competitive world isn't it so i can either ignore or i can even justify right then i can also mm. struggle with so i have ego you know and i'm doomed with it you see so much mm. problem i have inside what to do right and i am mm. suffering on that account so i can struggle with it and mm. other option could be i evaluate it rightly contemplate on the right feeling and ensure it within so if i contemplate on this take over under otherwise evaluation all will get you know, evaluated rightly or will get replaced by right evaluation so i can see that ego is not acceptable to naturally now you are saying that you mm. have a problem one very good thing is that with so much genuinity you have been sharing this you know before all this is very good to see that we can observe ourselves and share with transparency so like uh, first of all you are able to see and you are able to accept it very nice then you can contemplate within yourself what is acceptable to me naturally to over evaluate to under evaluate to otherwise evaluate yet there could be some people who are struggling with depression they mm. are saying that oh you know every time i blame myself for whatever happens around me if somebody mm -hmm. not happy self isn't it if i am not able to do something successfully i blame myself so there could mm -hmm. be some people who are struggling with depression there could be some people who are struggling with other wise evaluation you know let it go to hell how does it matter to me i do not you know have any concern for that so all those issues could be there but the solution is right evaluation so if i contemplate on right evaluation they all will get transformed and this is what is required to be done if you look at exercise 1 what we are saying is that look at the current state within in your imagination in your feeling then evaluate it and then find out the basis for it if it is acceptable to you naturally continue with it if not then mm. transform it that's all that is what what is required to be done ji ji and that is that we need to accept is that if i do not have right understanding i will doing something wrong only it's only a mm -hmm. matter of doing something rightly mm. it is there with me it is there with the other also some crude example mm -hmm. that it is know that if i do not know the door outside the room that will mm. let me out i will mm. collide with the walls with the table with the furniture with the roof isn't it but if i know mm -hmm. the way outside then i will not collide with any of them so if ji, ji. i do not have right feeling and sure in me i will have some wrong feeling that is fine that is going to be there mm. so i have to work to transform it that's all ji ji so it Now can be a natural process without uh, without struggling too much no see when you say it is a natural process then what is natural again so one may say nothing to the natural like you know it does take time oh. so why to bother about it that will not help mm -hmm. in fact i see that it is not acceptable to me naturally so i have to work for it mm -hmm. the decision is mine mm -hmm. to continue with it or to transform it so mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. in place of calling it natural i'll say that yes it is there with me and it is not acceptable to me mm -hmm. naturally so mm -hmm. what do i do now do i transform it or do i continue with it that is my decision again mm mm okay didi ji ji so transform means you mean distinguishes between the two words natural and normal so normal is uh, what is uh, normal so we can call it normal uh, yeah people with lack of right understanding will have this kind of behavior will have this kind of attitude you know this is generally observed normal or general mm. you can say but this is not natural mm -hmm. because it is not naturally acceptable mm -hmm. isn't it ji 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 bhaiya 
naivety now if you look at the second question that you are asking so the relationship between the self and the body is mutual fulfillment self is fulfilling the body the body is fulfilling the self so the self is fulfilling the body as seer doer observer the body is fulfilling the self as an instrument mm mm ji ji uh bhaiya before conclude uh, let me share my interesting observation bhaiya mm. these days when i take demo presentation i could hear from my resource person and mentors that i am stating the proposals not putting forward as proposals and now i could see bhaiya uh, since i am having that ego i want to show that i know everything i want to prove that i am confident like that so um, it comes to me that whatever i know i just want to share before that uh, so that i could observe bhaiya yeah. and that is why i am not able to put forward as proposals that is there which is right. driving me whatever i know i want to put forward before the audience Oh, so right, there I right. could note. Now you note one important you, thing. Buddy. If some person is there, yeah, you note one important thing. If some person is there who is, let's say, egoist, right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. you try to bring down the ego, then you can see so much of struggle and fight and things like that would take place. But once mm-hmm. we are into the self-realization process, we observe by ourselves that yes, I am having ego. I share it with all, and then I also say that, right? Yeah, i'm still not able to transform and i want to transform you can just see the different process that we are into mm-hmm. otherwise mm-hmm. if somebody you know there are there may be so many people who are having this problem of ego for example and you have to struggle with them so many times and then it becomes a matter of concern for the whole organization people are not able to transform him but once the same person is into the process of self exploration he himself mm. or herself starts you know or he or she you know starts working upon oneself and transforming oneself mm mm you can now the way you are sharing mm-hmm. right now you are the way you are sharing suggest that you are in pain you know that this problem is not getting replaced or the mm 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 and you are working sincerely mm-hmm. for that otherwise mm. changing this kind of thing in a single person may take a lifetime Mm-hmm. so that is the good thing about self exploration once we are into yes, that process we, we start taking it as our own responsibility and start transforming mm-hmm. ourselves ji ji and now that you are able to see this so we can all see that how your presentation during the demo sessions is getting transformed it is getting more and more natural and you know, more and more fulfilling but yes we can also see that it needs some more work to be done that is fine you all mm-hmm. are coaches mm-hmm. but you work on that front and that will help you see mm-hmm. see thank you thank you so much bhaiya i could find it very very interesting bhaiya to know that that is a struggle that is an obstacle for my sharing values thank you so much bhaiya nice didi namaste my understanding is there is a thin line between self respect and ego if someone yeah. hurts our self respect how should we respond like should we say okay let it go they do not have the uh, right understanding or should we respond saying that what is right because it hurts us at times when we are right and when the other people are wrong and when they are hurting our self respect it normally hurts us should we keep quiet saying that let it go it is their wrong understanding or should we respond to them saying what is right um so i just seek your advice bhaiya yeah. yeah so the solution is doing right evaluation of oneself and the other and complementing the other so if somebody is violating my self respect and self respect is merely like right evaluation of myself then i see that yes this is not the right evaluation and when i am complimenting the other then i am helping the other evaluate me rightly in that process i have also ensured the self respect of the other 
and that would mean I will rightly evaluate the other. So if somebody is not behaving properly, you know, then I can note it. I will not ignore it. And then I'll try to get in dialogue with the other so that I can help the other develop one's competence. So we can look for the time and opportunity to get in dialogue. If there is some occasion where I do not have sufficient time and opportunity to get in dialogue and the situation is becoming worse, somebody is not able to mind one's behavior, right? And violating the relationship then i can also say at that moment with respect that what you are doing is not the right thing kindly take a note of it and this can also be su suggested to the other okay bhaiya. thank you thank you bhaiya. yes yeah. sir uh, i would like to ask a question it is when people misunderstand us uh, and we try our best to, you know, uh, convince them, but they are not ready to have a conversation with us or they are not taking the same efforts as us. So the relationship remains bitter. But we really make amends, but uh, uh, people are not ready from the other side. So how can we deal with the situation? Say it again. You're not getting the same response from the other side. And yes, you're trying to compliment the other. Yeah, we want to, you know, we want to stay positive and uh, we want to patch up with them, but they are not ready. Okay. See, in relationship, we see that these approaches do not have a sustainable solution. Like patching up or trying to you know, uh, somehow make over things. What ultimately works is working for right understanding, right feeling within oneself, sharing the right feeling and right understanding with the other, and helping the other work for right understanding, right feeling. This is the sustainable solution. Yes, sir. So, one everyone takes different uh, period of time to get into the process of self exploration. That may vary. So, it may be the case that the other person is not ready to understand with your guidance for that time which is there. That is quite possible. But we can see that the natural acceptance of everyone is to be happy and to make the other happy. To live yes. with definite human conduct. This is the natural yes. acceptance. Yes. So I will see how come this kind of scenario has emerged and what is hindering that relationship. So if it is my lack of competence, I will work to transform myself sincerely. If I am having the competence, then I'll compliment the other by getting in dialogue with the other. For that, I will also try to understand the other. It may be the case that there are some uh, certain things which have happened in the past and which have spoiled the relationship. Yes. Sir. Or there could be some preconditionings which I have uh, acknowledged in the past which the other is having. Hmm. And now I'm going to see that those preconditions are not right. True, sir. Isn't it? And then there are problems. For example, just an example, let's say you know, husband and wife are there. They yes, get sir. married and they had a common preconditioning. For example, physical facilities, happiness, human being is body, success in life means name, fame, money, post, right? And yes, then, then they marry each other. So we have already acknowledged the <clears throat> wrong preconditioning of the other and then entered into that relationship. Now you're able to see that this is not right. This is not acceptable to me naturally. And then you are trying to help the other understand. But now that you already acknowledge that conditioning, based on which the relationship was defined, so it becomes very difficult. This is just one example. The same thing may happen in an organization. The same thing may happen in friendship. The same thing may happen in an extended relationship. Second thing is that, like with the preconditionings already in place, my conduct has not been definite with the other, and the other person has got hurt, and the other person is unhappy with my behavior. 
and then when i try to modify my behavior the other is not able to acknowledge it when i try to help the other transform the other is not able to accept it yes sir so that is, i understand yes. but uh, what i have to say is what if someone else must have told some wrong stories about us it's maybe about a misunderstanding or they have a prejudiced attitude uh, so what can be done we try our best to solve it from our side sir yeah so you can keep on working for the solution at the same time your expectation will not be on not be based on some preconditioning that if i have made this much effort this much outcome should be there no so you try to see for yourself that your conduct is definite yes sir you have the right feeling isn't it right thought for the other yes sir and then you share the facts that are there if the other person is not able to accept the let it be fine Okay. The other person may take time to evaluate, and then I will also try to fulfill other my my other relationships. Mm. So it so happens, you no, know, that many times just by dialogue, the other person does not feel assured. But when the other person observes my conduct with all human beings, right, mm. then the other person also starts getting assured uh, assured of me of my conduct, my understanding. So okay. That is also possible. Okay, sir. Clear, sir. Thank you. nice uh by uh, uh regarding the um, exercise one when i'm trying to sit down with myself uh, in a quiet place um so by uh, with my level of competence uh, i could observe that um with my imagination that i'm gaining my imagination is going towards either getting respect from other or sensation from outside or others or uh, is it it's uh, if these two are, are not there then either it's going to the to the money or physical facilities that's all i could observe in um, yesterday from my observation okay so it is just a sharing or you have some question also the the question it just the observation that i wanted to share the question could be that uh, i'm trying to move forward uh, is that the right observation that i had um cuz most of the observation is from situations um so just wanted to share uh, what i have observed yeah so now that you are able to observe that you are trying to fetch happiness from outside mm -hmm. then you can start looking at the innate source of happiness also so let it be but at the same time you can start exploring within and yes. in that process you can also evaluate the sources outside of happiness will that continue will that be definite will that have any completion point will that not yes. make me dependent on something outside for my happiness so that i am always craving for it and not innately happy so ask such questions to you and look at your natural acceptance so gradually that innate source starts getting developed theek hai bhaiya but i can clearly see that they are not in continuous and uh, they are temporary that's in the past as well but uh, still get uh, coiled up in those imagination yes so one common example that we keep on giving no sir uh, in place of struggling with a small line you can draw a bigger line and then we can see that yes this is better than the previous one so yes. the happiness that i am getting from outside is momentary but when i am able to see the source of happiness inside and i can see how it continues then naturally i start uh, overcoming my dependence on things outside right clear right thank you nice ah uh, we seek attention from uh, others and uh, especially the attention or uh, maybe the affection or whatever we name it we expect that from the near and dear ones is it wrong to have that expectation and we feel hurt when it is not fulfilled or satisfied is it wrong to have one such expectation you tell me 
So if you are getting hurt and you are feeling unhappy, so naturally it cannot be the source of continuity of happiness. So there is something wrong with expectation. The expectation is not guided by right understanding. So there is no problem with expectation as such. The problem is when it is not guided by right understanding. And what we term generally as affection, maybe some over evaluation. And we'll see that when we over evaluate some relationship, so it may not be fulfilling all the time. And then you are expecting happiness from the, the other person. The other person may not act according to my desires, my thoughts, my expectations. And then I feel hurt. When I'm able to see the relationship of self and self, which is a major shift in my observation of relationship. Then the problems of over, under, otherwise evaluation start getting you know, uh, solved and I'm able to see the relationship as it is. Many times you are not able to see the relation of self and self. For example, if I have a baby and I get mesmerized by the looks of the baby, the smile of the baby, the eyes of the baby, isn't it? So I may feel that I have a lot of feeling of relationship but with the baby but ultimately i'm looking at the baby as a body i'm not able to see the self <clears throat> now when the same child does not work according to our wishes in the long run then it feels so much unhappy because we are not able to see the relationship of self and self Ms. Baya. Nicely. So the expectation needs to be guided by right understanding. <clears throat> and then we can see the feeling of relation with one and all. That is the feeling of love. I do this exercise, but uh, sometimes the incidents that took place in the daily life, uh, I expect something from some person and if he is not doing it, I get hurt. I feel that it is insult to me. And uh, when I sit for self-observation, these things slowly come in my brain and little bit time I get disturbed. Later on, after some times, uh, try to analyze with the right understanding Gradually, I overcome it, but uh, but uh, uh, Didi has told that there is an ego. I think it, it may be ego, but I, I, I think that somebody is insulting me, then I judge on the basis of that and reaction comes. And of course, during observation, that reaction subsides and I become okay. But it disturbs a lot. Self ego or what whatever be I I try to understand it, but it disturbs a lot that the certain person has insulted me, he has not cared for me. Um, how to overcome this? How to overcome this? Thank you, Vaya. Nice, Bia. I think uh, the same question responded to Gita Didi. I'll say. Ah, Gita, right, right. Yeah. So right. I have to rightly evaluate myself. In place of struggling with the ego or undermining it, ignoring it, or justifying it, I'll try to see what is acceptable to me naturally and work for it. It so happens it is... that, yeah, maybe I have this problem of ego. And when I see this, then I have another problem. How come a person like me can have ego? This is another form of ego. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Because I'm such a nice person, who can say that I have ego? This is another form of ego. But yeah, I have seen that whenever I comes, natural uh, acceptance goes away. It's not the issue with I. It's the issue with false notion of I. <laughs> right, 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 right. When I look at myself, 
being separated from others, not in relationship, you know, myself in isolation, then that problem is there. If I can see relationship with one and all, this problem is not there. Then the moment I see the relationship, I look at myself as a unit in this entire nature, complementing each and every other unit. But why, why feel uh, hurt and try to overcome that hurt? It takes time. It takes time. Yeah. So it so happens now that it is my decision to continue with it. It is my decision to nurture that feeling. The moment I am able to see that I am nurturing this feeling within me, it is my decision and it is not acceptable to me naturally. Then my hold on that feeling becomes loose. Thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice, nice, Bhaiya. Thank you. I got it. I got it. So observing self by the self, that is looking within. And we noted it yesterday that this is just one way of looking within and not the only way. The steps mentioned in this exercise are one possible set of steps and not the only set of steps. So essentially, what we are trying to do is to observe oneself. Okay. And some steps are suggested here as a methodology of observing. And ultimately, we have to observe as a true observer, pure observer. So that is something which is universal, that unless I observe myself as a pure observer, I am not able to observe myself because I am conditioned and so many things get mixed up in my observation. But when it comes to drawing the number of steps or the mechanism, then it may vary from person to person. So it is just a proposition for each one of us that we can go by this and we can try to see the self as a pure observer. Jeevaya. So to see, to observe, for these observations, do I need to use the eyes? So no, so we can give rest to the eyes. Do I need to take any work from the body? No, so we can give rest to the body. So we can keep the body in any comfortable position and we can keep eyes in any comfortable position. The purpose is to observe. This is something that we discussed yesterday. Next slide, Bria. So these are the steps. I just go over all these steps for once and then we'll try to do them one by one. So I have to be aware <coughs> to observe your imagination <coughs> at this moment. That is the desire, that is the feeling, thought, expectation. Without any reaction. So you have to be aware. Then is the feeling that you have at this moment naturally acceptable to you? Ask yourself. Are you in harmony, happy with the feeling that you have at this moment? Ask yourself. Who decided the feeling that you have at this moment? Did you decide it or someone else or situation outside decided it? Ask yourself. On what basis did you decide the feeling you have at this moment? Did you decide it on the basis of some un, of, <clears throat> on the basis of understanding or on the basis of an assumption? Then again ask yourself, which feelings are naturally acceptable to you? Feelings of relationship or opposition, harmony or disharmony, coexistence or struggle? Ask yourself. We explore within to understand relationship, harmony, and coexistence in its completeness in the context of the whole nature existence. Then we are able to decide here that I have to ultimately contemplate on relationship. I have to understand harmony and I have to realize coexistence in step 6b. In step 7, what we are saying is that ensure that the feeling that you have at this moment is in line with the relationship of, is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. On this basis, I will be in a state of harmony and not happiness. Sorry, uh, the fonts are very small at <laughs> the moment. Yeah. On this basis, I will be in a state of harmony and happiness at this moment. 
when i am able to understand relationship harmony and coexistence in its completeness then i will be able to decide my feeling thought accordingly in a natural manner and then i will always be comfortable within i will be in a state of harmony and happiness and continuity so these are the seven steps i just went over them it's not expected that we start doing this and accomplish you know, in one go so we'll go over the steps one by one uh, sir i would like to ask uh, we all natural flow uh, so sometimes so we all prefer uh, feelings and anything to flow naturally but what happens is like uh, sometimes we wait for that from the other side something induced is not uh, going to be natural we might feel but after having a conversation with the people or the person from the other side uh, maybe they might say oh it was uh, okay you should have just told us it was just a matter of you know would have just told us would have understood better maybe um, lack of their competence so but when we make them understand okay it was just a simple thing should have uh, you know dealt with it within that day itself but we might feel like okay let them come to us naturally but they might have not that understanding so uh, sometimes i think the communication is sometimes it is good we need and wait for it to flow naturally sometimes we we'll let communication them communication is going to be the voice was not clear communication is going to be communication is always the key so sometimes we might feel instead of waiting for the feelings to flow naturally sometimes uh, we can have a good conversation with each other and uh, if uh, if it is possible we should let the other person know this is how we feel so uh, they have a better understanding about us and what we are feeling instead of waiting for the other person to you know uh, feel their flow naturally they might not understand that they might feel okay certainly certainly yes, so sir. it's always better to get in dialogue yes sir that's what i feel because they I might say holding oh, oneself told it before holding oneself justify self let us try to see together what is right yes 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 sir okay so i uh, i just felt a little bit contradictory like everything should flow freely it is there it is always preferred but sometimes i think we should have uh, we should let the other person know what we are feeling certainly certainly and the expression is not going to be verbal every time that is also there it's okay. not that you have to tell the same thing every time so if the other person is not able to comprehend then you can get in dialogue share okay. Okay. and then you can try to develop the competence in the other also so that the other is able to understand okay yes. isn't it it's yes. not that every day we are going to sit together and dialogue for half an hour so gradually see that our communication becomes so uh, enriched that we are able yeah. to feel for each other mm. so sir i feel yes sir incidents like where uh, Uh, some of uh, some of my friends have told you should have just told us you should have uh, told us then uh, that day itself it was just matter of a few minutes like that yes yes why not see we might be carrying some wrong concepts some wrong notions about the other the other also might be carrying mm, yes sir isn't it one yes. example that we keep sharing is that uh, at hyderabad in one institute one student was going to the mess and one was coming out so the boy who was coming out you know said hello to the other and other did not know mm. and he was assuming him him to be a good friend he felt very bad that in early morning i have said hello and i wished him so well and did not take a note of it so he had something within him self in his imagination that this person is ignoring me and you know, from next time i have to take care i should not be expecting so much of things from him mm. while the other person was ignoring now in the evening this boy saw him at the cafe and uh was little hesitant to approach him but he felt that okay this is the first time this has happened let me just ask him and you know, maybe uh, i am wrong at this point of time but let me just ask when he asked then he found that this person had lost his wallet and he was running here and there looking for the wallet in the mess in the washroom in his own room in yes, the hostel sir. right yes, yes so 
if the communication would not have taken place you would just have felt bad for each other now the next time when the other person was saying hello this person would have ignored and yes. the relationship would have got spoiled yes. so this kind of sharing is very important yes in all relationships between husband and wife between parent and child yes sir between friends yes and in place of trying to reconcile with the relationship or trying to accept the conditions of each other we have to take a dialogue in a direction so that both of us can start working for right understanding true sir thank you sir thank you sir yes so self observation self awareness that is step 1 so i that is self that is consciousness and observing myself so be aware of yourself a simple way is to be aware of your imagination so in step 1a what we are saying is that try and observe your imagination try and observe the desire thought and expectation in your imagination so the outcome would be i am observing the self by the self i am observing my imagination my desire thought and expectation at this moment so observe the imagination going on within you at this moment of time just as it is without evaluating it without reacting to it without trying to stop it without trying to change it just observe this is step 1 so what we'll do we'll observe for 5 minutes and then we can take up questions and sharing so i have to observe my imagination <clears throat> without reacting to it okay without evaluating it without imposing something upon it without trying to fix something from my side just be as you are and observe we'll observe for 5 minutes and then share
be nice uh, while observing my imagination being aware uh, my attention is going outside means the vehicles birds their sounds and all that that is coming and again i am coming back to my awareness and i find that uh, i go uh, i i see the feeling directly and uh, i am in a confusion that what is the necessity of having the categories like uh, desire thought and expectation so that i wanted to know in this step itself thank you yes so the need is there because the desire that is feeling drives my thought and the thought drives my expectation so it may be the case that i am only observing my thoughts and not getting anywhere because unless i observe my feelings i am not able to transform my feelings so the essence is to observe the feeling in my imagination and it may also be the case that i am dwelling at the level of expectation only expecting things to happen either within me or from outside without any effort or i am expecting some outcome out of some effort which may not be you know, uh true so that's how i have to be clear about my imagination i have to observe the feeling i have to see what is driving my thought i have to see what expectations i am carrying within am i driven by expectations or i have clarity about my feeling that's how it is important in the first step it is that uh, having having no evaluation means having no reaction to the imagination it is the second step in which i see the differentiation between these three is it that no so since you asked why evaluated otherwise try to observe the feeling in step 1 if you are able to observe the feeling you can naturally observe the thought and expectation also but fine to try to observe the feeling as it is without evaluating in step 2 we are going to evaluate so you can observe the mm -hmm. thought and expectation differently in step 1 also and it is not evaluation making out whether it is desire or thought expectation is not evaluation setting something as right or something as wrong becomes evaluation so that is what we are trying to avoid in step 1 otherwise you no know, we are so accustomed so conditioned to set something as right and set something as wrong based on our own conditionings that we are not able to explore as a pure observer so when it is desire when it is uh, expectation that i am in confusion that's the main whole problem so the feeling is the desire in fact that is a kind of fine observation because at the level of expectation also i am testing some feeling if you look at the testing activity in the expectation there also i am testing some feeling and i am having the feeling at the level of desire that's how we normally are not able to distinguish between the two whether it is feeling or whether it is desire or expectation because the feeling is there at the level of desire also and the testing is taking place at the level of expectation so then you have to see whether i am imaging or i am testing so the imaging part is desire the testing part is expectation if you try to observe it more finely this will what will appear to you okay i i need more time to see this so for example we are feeling uncomfortable now the feeling uncomfortable is at the level of testing so many times when we try to observe within we are able to observe whether i am comfortable or uncomfortable this is happening at the level of testing but what the feeling is there which is making me uncomfortable is there at the level of desire mm -hmm. okay fine i'll see yeah observe it yes <clears throat> thank you uh bhai i want to ask you the uh, anger is uh, anger feeling is naturally acceptable or not because say uh, say you are you are uh, communicating with a particular person uh, which uh, whom you know for a long time 
and maybe you know the competence of that person and the person is uh, at a higher position and maybe it is not possible for you to uh, start a dialogue between you between us uh, between us or or that person so at that moment um, some if at some position of time you uh, it's very common that a feeling of angry angriness can start at your level though after some time uh, you can manage it by your right understanding and right feeling but at that moment anger is a uh, naturally acceptable feeling or not you find yourself is anger naturally acceptable to you maybe maybe bhaiya you can suppress your anger you can maybe cool you can understand everything about yourself that it will fade away after some time but still at that moment it's quite common for all of us know that a feeling of discomfort yeah, the same thing something being common and something being natural are two different things so people in common are living with animal concept that is fine but it is not natural it is not naturally acceptable so it may be common that people lose their temper but is it acceptable to me naturally within so no it is not acceptable to me naturally now why do i get angry you see that in any situation when i am not resolved i do not have answer to my own question how come this person is behaving like this why did this person did not do what i asked the other to do you know so many times i am asking myself i do not have the answer then i feel angry so basically it is my own incompetence if i am resolved i will not feel angry if i am able to see the problem and the solution i will not feel angry once i am not able to see then i feel angry so it is again my decision my lack of competence and it is not acceptable to me naturally but it so happens that when we do not have the program for resolution then we try to justify it some way or the other justification will not help okay okay bhaiya nice now nice. you find out yourself you can see that it is not acceptable to you naturally okay so this okay. is about uh, uh, we understand that desires uh, thought and expectations are uh, different so the expectations uh, um when it is not met we feel you know that unsatisfied or uh, whatever it is so now it is with my understanding is it, it is within our self to see that even if the expectation is not satisfied to keep ourselves happy is it so bhaiya this is my understanding am i right in the understanding what i have no say the last sentence again is it natural that so desires desires and expectations are two different things this is mm -hmm. my understanding uh, for example i have a desire to own a bungalow or whatever it is that becomes a desire and when it comes to expectations many a times it is connected to the self may not be physical this is my understanding i may be wrong as well but so when our expectations are not fulfilled then we feel unhappy so uh, it is always something to do with the self mm, so how to keep it up even if it is not met like Yeah, that's so we have to decide. So the self has to decide that, uh, uh, it, this, irrespective of whether it is fulfilled or no, we have to keep the self happy. Is it so, brother? See, happiness is to be in a state of harmony, and the expectation is there in the self, right? The feeling of happiness or unhappiness is there in the self. So the solution is what I said earlier also that the expectation, when guided by right understanding. ensures happiness when the expectation is not guided by right understanding then i am trying to fetch happiness from outside and then sometimes it may be there sometimes it may not be there that the expectation is fulfilled so the continuity is there